In this video, I decided to Nuzlocke Pokemon Legends Arceus with only shiny Pokemon. Instead of catching a shiny in each name area, I decided to limit it due to how few battles there are in the game. Each area you can enter, you can encounter one shiny Pokemon. When you get a new ride Pokemon, you can encounter one shiny Pokemon. And when you defeat a Lord Pokemon, you can encounter one shiny Pokemon. Essentially, in each area you can encounter up to three shiny Pokemon. The main rules of this shiny lock are simple. If you encounter a shiny, you must catch it. You must nickname each shiny Pokemon you capture. If a shiny Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and cannot be used again. You are allowed to complete dex entries to increase shiny odds, but when progressing the story, you can only carry shiny Pokemon with you. Every boss lore Pokemon you face needs to have a battle included in it. Shiny Ponyta counts as a static encounter and not a wild one. If the encounter is a duplicate Pokemon of one you caught before, it does not count as an encounter, but you cannot use it either. Now, let's get into the challenge. We start off with Story meeting Arceus, giving me a mission to seek out all Pokemon, and before I knew it, I woke up in front of the three Hisuian starters, as well as the Professor. The Professor gives me a task to catch the three starters, Rowlet, Syndical, and Oshawa, and in case you are wondering, these Pokemon are shiny locked, so it's impossible to get them as a shiny. The professor then takes me to the village and treats me to some Mickey D's. I go to sleep and we see lightning being struck to a giant tree. It's probably not important. I woke up and was given a task to take a test to join the survey corps and that task is to slay a titan all by myself, as well as catch one beat of starling chinx. I was given my starter Cyndaquil. This starter will be temporary until I'm able to hunt for my actual starter shiny. We made it to the Obsidian Fieldlands, caught the three Pokemon I needed, and we joined the Survey Corps and met with some of the higher-ups. I proceeded back to the Obsidian Fieldlands to start my shiny lock. I limited to two of these small areas to hunt for my shiny Pokemon since I cannot continue the story without one. So I decided the best way to start this is to fill up my Pokedex to increase my odds for a shiny Pokemon. During my hunt, I completed dex entries with lots of different Pokemon and perfected a couple of them as well, including Starly, Wurmple, and Buizel. At 6 hours playtime, we finally got a shiny Pokemon and that is Buizel. I named the Buizel Flopsy because I think it's a fun name and I hope she doesn't flop. The odds for this Pokemon since I perfected the page was 1 out of 1024. We proceeded with the story and we decided to fight this girl to continue forward and we have our first fight with the Alpha Cricketoon. Uh, we almost lost the Shiny Luck when Weasel was left with only 2 HP but she clutched up and defeated the Alpha Cricketoon. We opened up a new campsite and headed back to the village where the professor treated us to some Chick-fil-A. We then meet the clan leaders and then we get robbed by this guy for all my money just so he can give me extra pockets. I then see Volo and obviously he's not a suspicious character so we carried on. We met up with Liam and we absolutely destroyed his Gumi. Now we need to come up with a solution to calm down the frenzied Cleavor. I talked with the professor and we found out we can make some bombs to chuck at the Pokemon thanks to a YouTube tutorial that the professor found. When I head back to the Obsidian Fieldland, I'm given White Deer as a new ride Pokemon, and now I'm able to hunt for my second shiny Pokemon. Just like before, I got a bunch of Pokedex entries completed, as well as perfected some pages, which are Shinx, Cricketoon, and Drifloon. And at about 8.5 hours playtime, we encountered a shiny Shinx. The odds for this shiny is 1 out of 1024 since it was a perfected page. I decided to name the Chinx Ranga after Ranga from Tensei Slime since they both reference stars. We did an epic training session and evolved both my Pokemon. Flopsy evolved into Floatzel and Ranga evolved into Luxio. We then faced against Iridia's Glaceon and easily defeated her. We then proceeded to make bombs for Cleavor and now it's time for my first battle against the Lord of the Woods, Cleavor. Cleavor was easy to hit bombs at and we easily dodged its moves. Once we did stun it, I did send out my Flopsy into battle and defeated Cleavor with two Aqua Jets. We proceeded to chug bombs at it and then we successfully defeated it and calmed it down. Now defeated, Cleavor opens up the last shiny slot for the Obsidian Fieldlands, but I decided to save the encounter for later. We head back to the village to report and encounter Volo again, who was somehow surprised I got two plates from the two Lord Pokemon. Definitely not a red flag at all. 
I reported back to Komodo and the professor then treated us to some Taco Bell with some Baja Blast. And since I did beat Cleavor Task 19, a peculiar Ponyta is unlocked. And in this task, I am given a static encounter of Shiny Ponyta. This is a static encounter since it's technically not a wild shiny. We caught the Ponyta and added him to our team as our third shiny. We named Ponyta Ponygun, which is the name of a horse character in one of my favorite old animes, Zatch Bell. I named him this because it's a horse, but this horse also has fire armor, so I believe it fits well with this character. In the village, we are introduced to Irizu, and I am suddenly in love, honestly. We then get the mission to explore the Crimson Mirelands to study Ursa Luna. But before I make it out of the gates, I am challenged by Ray, where I destroy him with Flopsy. I arrive in the Crimson Mirelands and then headed to Cilician Ruins to meet with Kalaba to find a missing piece of the wall. I am challenged to a fight with Volo, and with the power of bulk up on Flopsy, I swoop them again. I head towards the campsite and I'm ambushed by these annoying trio of people who challenge me to a battle where I destroyed Toxicroak with three Aqua Jets and I retrieved the missing piece. Without all the way, I'm tasked to meet with Kalaba to try to calm down Ursaluna, but before that, it's time to find the next member of our team. Like before, I got the Pokemon around me Pokedex entry completed, as well as the perfect entry for Psyduck. I also evolved Ranga to Luxray during this time. I ended up encountering a shiny Badoo with a completed dex entry that puts me about 1 out of 2048 odds. I named Badoo Mimosa after Mimosa from Black Clover since she has plant magic in the anime and plant and plant, you know, makes a perfect match. So far we have solid team going into Ursa Luna. We face against Ursa Luna with Flopsy since we have a type advantage. We defeated it in no problem and obtained Ursa Luna as a right Pokemon. We are then tasked to look for Aruzu using Ursa Luna. We find her hurt and now we obtain a new mission to defeat and calm down Lilligan. Before we faced her, we filled up more of our Pokedex and managed to evolve Ponygon to Rapidash. We didn't find any shiny Pokemon for hours, so I decided to save the encounters for later and face against Lady of the Ridge, Hisuian Lilligan. Dodging her moves was quite easy and when it came down to battle, uh, Ponygon managed to one shot Lilligan using Flame Wheel. We managed to defeat and calm down Lilligan. Before we leave the area, we are then approached by Volo. Definitely not suspicious at all, who praised me for defeating Lilligan. We went back to the village to report to Komodo, and the professor treated me to some Domino's Pizza. We are then tasked to head to the Cobalt Coastland to help out a Warden. We face against Iridia and her Glaceon, and we use Grunga to defeat it and the Eevee on the side. We then meet with Paulina, who is seen in front of a gravestone of the previous Lord Arcanine, who died drowning in the sea. We are then tasked to talk to the other warden of the area and we encounter Volo once again who mentions he is hunting for some plates and knows I have four of them and wonders what happens if I obtain all of them. Definitely not suspicious at all. We then meet with the warden Iskan who tasks me to catch Dustlop so we can make food for Basque Legion and we do just that. Before we meet Basque Legion I took a break to hunt for my fifth member so we went to all the areas and got a bunch of completed dex pages and perfected the page for Drifloon. We evolved Mimosa to Rosalia, and then we encountered a shiny Drifloon in the Cobalt Coastlands. With a perfected page, the odds of encountering is 1 out of 1024. I named Drifloon after Kirby, since it's a balloon, and Kirby is a pink balloon in my eyes, so it makes sense. I then started to gather lots of lost satchels in the areas to get enough points to get a shiny stone, which I used to evolve Mimosa to Roserade. I also evolved Kirby into Drifloon. Now that we have 5 shiny Pokemon, we then proceed to the beach to get Basque Legion as a ride Pokemon. We successfully attain it and then suddenly the bandit girls show up out of nowhere and took the big doggo. We are tasked to go to Fire Pit Island to save the big doggo by using Basque Legion to get there. But before we do, I decided to train up and explore the rest of the island since I have access to everything now. To my surprise, we encountered a shiny gold duck and the odds of this Pokemon with a completed page is 1 out of 2048. We ended up catching the shiny gold duck and with many different ideas for duck names, I decided to name it Quaxly. I thought it was original and definitely not a ripoff of another water duck Pokemon. We travel to Fire Pit Island to save the big doggo, and we have to face against the three bandit sisters. We face against Clover's Obama Snow, and with one flame wheel from Ponygon, we win this battle. We then face against Coin's Toxicroak, and with one high horsepower from Ponygon, we again win this battle. We then face against the last sister Charm and her Rhydon and Gengar. I was a little scared of Rhydon's type advantage so I switched into Flopsy and balked up my defense and attack. 
and then we sweep both Pokemon with Aquatel. After defeating the Bandit Sisters, Little Doggo wants to save the Big Doggo and evolves into a bigger Doggo. Then, got struck by lightning, and the odds of that happening in real life during a lifetime is 1 out of 15,300, which is quite insane how low the odds are. Now I have to be careful during thunderstorms. Now that we have a new Lord Pokemon to face, we make some bombs and face against the Lord of the Isles, Arcanine. During my first playthrough, Arcanine was tough, but now it's much easier for me since it's easy to time its attacks. And then once we stun it, we send out our Flopsy, and with a combination of Bulk Up and Aquatel, we one shot the Arcanine and finish it off, and successfully defeated this boss Pokemon. After calming the Arcanine down, we then see another one on top of the Volcano. I didn't realize that at the time during my first playthrough, but that's actually the ghost of the Arcanine that died in the sea that was mentioned earlier. I didn't realize that before, but that's cool to see. We go back to the village and report to Komodo, and the professor treated us to some nice chipotle. We wake up and encounter Warden Ingo as well as Meli, which I dislike a lot. We are then given a test to head to Cornet Highlands. Before we head out, we face against Alderman and we use Ranga to fight his Leafeon and the Eevee on the side. We defeated both Pokemon with ease and we travel to the Cornet Highlands to meet with Ingo, where he guides me through a cave. We avoided a wild alpha crowbat as well as telling me about his past and memories. We then encounter Melee and face off against its skunk tank. Ponygon easily defeated skunk tank with one high horsepower. We defeated Melee and then we encountered Volo for the hundredth time in a row. Definitely not suspicious at all. After traveling up the mountain, then we face against Ingo. Ingo has a powerful team. With Machoke using bulk up, Ponygon took quite a while to defeat Machoke, but doing this cost me to be at low health after we defeated Machoke. Ingo sends out Gliscor to attack me twice in a row, which causes me to lose Ponygon as it faints. We then send out Flopsy to finish Ingo last two Pokemon with its bulk up and defeated Glassquare and Tangla. This was my first death in the series and losing Ponygon really took a toll on us. After the battle we obtained Sneasler as the new ride Pokemon and we decided to take a pause in the store to go ahead and shiny hunt for the new Pokemon to replace Ponygon. I ended up finding a mass outbreak of Chinx and found a shiny one in the bunch. Since I have Ranga I cannot use the shiny Chinx in the playthrough due to the duplicate cost. What's interesting is that at the same time I found the shiny Chinx, I ended up finding a shiny Onyx soon after. I have not completed the dex page for this Pokemon, so I ended up catching this shiny Onyx with full odds, 1 out of 4096. I named the Onyx Kabramaru after the pet snake in Demon Slayer. I found more satchels to get a metal coat and used it to evolve Kabramaru to Steelix. This is the current team we're going into the next Lord Pokemon. We face against Melly once again and face against the Skunk Tank with Skorupi and Zubat on the side. With our newest addition in our team, we started the battle and managed to defeat Skunk Tank with high horsepower. We defeated the other two and beat Melly with ease. We make some bombs and face against the Lord of the Hollow, Hisuian Electrode. Electric was difficult to dodge from and we managed to stun it and send out cover Maru to use Fire Fang and defeat it. We chucked more bombs and again we stunned it and sent out Kairamaru to defeat it once again. We defeated Hisuian Electrode and calmed him down. We then returned to the village to report to Komodo and the professor decided to treat us to some in and out. We are then tested to go to the Alabaster Icelands and before we go we face against Ray and sweep them using Kairamaru. I decided to take a break from the game and explore the other areas. We managed to find a mass outbreak of Teddy Ursa and ended up finding a shiny one in the bunch. Since I have two encounters left in Cornet Highlands, this is a legal Pokemon. I caught it and placed it in my reserves and named it Sailor after Sailor Moon since its evolution line references the moon. We then proceed to the Alabaster Icelands and meet with Garrick and face against his Galalee and Frostlass. We use Quaxley for this battle. We use Calm Mind to power up Quaxley's defense and attack. We defeated Galalee and then we defeated the Frostlass soon after. We are then tasked to chase after Sabi so we can obtain Bravery as a ride Pokemon. We follow her into the temple and face against Rhyperior, Electivire, and Magmortar. With Kuxley, we one shot a Rhyperior with Hydro Pump, and then we got paralyzed by Electivire and then burned by Magmortar soon after. We switch into Kabramaru to take out the rest with ease. Outside the temple, we face against Hisuian Bravery, and with Kirby's Ghost type moves, we defeated no problem and obtained Bravery as a ride Pokemon. We then use Bravery to get to the Eternal Ice, and we set off to see the Lord Pokemon. And on the way to get Avalug, we once again see Volo, who seems to be following me around a lot. Uh, definitely not suspicious at all. We make the necessary bombs and face against the Lord of the Tundra himself, Avalug. Avalug was easy to dodge and we used Quaxley to tank the hits. Set up with a Calm Mind and finish him off with a Hydro Pump. 
We then defeated Hisuian Avalug and managed to calm that down. We went back to the village and reported to Komodo and the professor treated me to some raising canes. Next thing we know, the whole sky gets colorful and the song suddenly sounds like the background music from the anime Bleach. We get kicked out of the village and then we get to lots of different character developing scenes. It all ends up to me meeting Kagita. We are tasked to get the blessings of the Lake Trio. I also picked Adaman to help me since I picked the other one during my first playthrough. We first go to Lake Verity to find Mespre. We encounter an Alpha Gudra. We send out Kabura Maru since he has a type advantage since Gudra is a dragon still type. A firefighting on higher horsepower is all it took to defeat Gudra. Then we obtain Mespre's plume. We next go to Lake Valor to find Azoth and we encounter an Alpha Overquill. We send out Kabura Maru once again since we again have a type advantage. We beat it, no problem with high horsepower, then we obtain Azel's Fang. We now head to Lake Acuity to find Uxi, and we encounter an Alpha Zorak. We send out Flopsy since this time she has access to Crunch. Zorak sets up with a nasty plot and did more than half damage to Flopsy, but luckily two Crunches was enough to take it down and obtain Uxi's Claw. We head to the Shroud of Runes to make and obtain the Red Chain. Now we can return to the village and meet up with the captain, and the professor didn't have time to treat me to some food, so I decided to get some via drive through at Wendy's. In the meantime, I decided to train up my Pokemon and find some encounters. In the Alabaster Icelands, we found a Duskull mass outbreak, and luckily found a shiny one in the bunch. We named the Duskull Dimple after the spirit ghost from Mob Psycho. Now we set up to the Corner Highlands and we encounter Benny, the man who served me all those delicious meals from before, but it turns out he is the Green Ninja and challenged me to a Pokemon battle. For this battle, I took a big risk and opened the battle with Kirby and banked on its Calm Mind to set a potential sweep. We faced Miss Magius and set up a Calm Mind and tanked the Super Effect Shadow Ball. Then we one-shotted it with Shadow Ball. Gardevoir came out next and got me with Hypnosis, which made me drowsy. We successfully got a Shadow Ball off and one-shotted the Gardevoir as well. With low health, Gallade was sent out, but instead of finishing me off, it sent out a Swords Dance, so we again went for a Shadow Ball to get another KO. Finally, Sneezer was sent out, but my Calm Mind effect ended, but luckily Sneezer went with a non-effective move that got me to the red. With the opportunity to save Kirby, I switched into Quaxley, and with one Psychic, it took care of Sneezer, and we defeated Benny. Coming out of the cave at Spear Pillar, we face against Komodo. He sends out Bravery against my Kirby. With the combination of Calm Mind and Shadow Ball, we defeated Bravery with one hit. Komodo sends out Golem, and to preserve Kirby, I sent out Flopsy. With a combination of Bulk Up and Aquatel, we again defeated Golem with one hit. Komodo next Pokemon is Snorlax, and since I have Bulk Up effects, I stayed in and used Aquatel. It took more than half. Komodo uses a Max Potion. I use another Aquatel to do more than half. Then my bulk up effect ended. Snorlax used double edge, which got me to the red. I rested with an Aquatel and successfully KO'd the Snorlax. Komodo's last Pokemon is Club Fable, and we luckily got to switch into Cover Maru to preserve Flopsy. And with two Iron Tails, we KO'd the Club Fable, no problem, and we defeated Komodo. We then approached Spear Pillar to encounter and catch Dialga. And since all the legendaries in this game are Shiny Lock, I cannot Shiny Hunt for this one. We then meet Palkia and he scared us away. We now need to look for the original ore located conveniently across from us and then we encounter the bandit sisters and long story short we just defeated them no problem I didn't bother showing footage of that. Back at the village the professor created a d20 to capture Diago with. We head back to the Subcorner Highlands running to Volo once again since it's been a hot minute since we last seen him but it's still not suspicious at all. Now we face against Palkia who destroys Spear Pillar and shows off its origin form. For some reason during the battle, I was unable to initiate a battle no matter how many times I reset the game. Not sure why, but we just had to continue. We captured Palkia and beat the game and the village treated me to a feast filled with food with my favorite restaurants. Now we are tasked to obtain the rest of the plates. We get the rock plate from Best of Queen and then we face against Komodo at the pier because the old man hasn't learned his lesson. Komodo starts out with Golem this time and me with Kirby, but I need to switch out to my Quaxley. Upon switching, Golem hits me with a Bulldoze and Thunder Punch right after. But, but that got me to yellow, luckily. I did defeat Golem with one Hydro Pump. The next Pokemon sent out was Snorlax, and luckily it was slow enough for me to switch back into Kirby. Snorlax was bulky and was trying my best to knock it out, but Komodo unfortunately had a full restore and took my Kirby out. This officially is the second death in the series. 
We then send out Flopsy to bulk up and take out Snorlax with two Aquatels. Heracross was the next Pokemon, and with a boosted Aquatel, it is left with a slither of health, and with a close combat from Heracross, that left me on yellow. Another Aquatel took down Heracross, but Komodo then sends out Clefable, who immediately goes for a Psychic to take out Flopsy. This is officially the third death in the series, as well as the death of her starter Pokemon. I then sent out Carver Maru and one shot the Clefable with Iron Tail. Braviary was the last Pokemon, and we defeated no problem with Carver Maru's Stuff Rocks. We defeated Komodo and gained the Fist Plate. We now have to replace our two fallen Pokemon with Sailor the Teddy Ursa and Dimple the Duskull. We take a pause on the story to train up and evolve the new additions. We leveled up Dimple to evolve into Desclops. We also evolved Sailor into Earthstream but forgot to record it. We then obtained a Reaper's Cloth from finding satchels and spent a good hour hunting for a Peat Block. We evolved Dimple into Dustnor and after a good time in the Mirelands we found a full moon and involves Sailor into Ursa Luna. During all this time, I encountered an Octillery Mass Outbreak and found a shiny one in the Cobalt Coastland since I have one encounter left in the area. I named the Octillery Suck because it kind of sucks and it has suction cups. Anyways, this is our new team going on into the story. We now have to capture all the legendary Pokemon since this part doesn't really have much story. Uh, long story short, we captured all the Pokemon and got all their plates. Kagita rewards us with a plate of her own. Volo is surprised about her having one, but definitely not suspicious. We then meet with Volo at the Corner Highlands, talking to me about the broken statue of Giratina. And this is definitely now foreshadowing something in the next few minutes. We then head up to the mountain to Spirit Pillar to meet with Volo. And to our surprise, revealed to us that he was the villain of the story. Who knew? Volo sends out Spirit Tomb against my Mimosa. Mimosa uses a Dazzling Gleam, which knocks out Spirit Tomb with one shot. Volo sends out Arcanine next, and using a strong style Raging Fury with a critical hit, it destroyed Mimosa and knocked her out. I think she would have lived if it weren't for the critical hit, which ruined my plan for Giratina later. I decided to take advantage of Arcanine's strong style and send out Quaxley, who sets up Calm Mine, followed by a Hydro Pump, which knocks it out. Rosary comes in next and we tanked her pedal dance thanks to the Calm Mind and followed it with an Ice Beam knocking her out. Lucario comes in with a close combat which lowered its defenses and with a Psych Attack I one shotted the Lucario. Tokikiss comes in and my Calm Mind runs out. I rest it with low health and set up another Calm Mind and the Tokikiss did the same. I Ice Beam the Tokikiss but Volo just full restores it which gives me a chance to hit Tokikiss with an Agile style Ice Beam followed by a strong style Ice Beam. Volo's last Pokemon is Garchomp, who finally takes out Quaxley, who died a champ, who took four Pokemon down with him. I sent out Dimple to take out Garchomp with two Ice Punches. We defeated Volo, but now we have to face against Garatina soon after. We send out Sailor to take on Garatina with its high HP and defense, since it's able to take an Aura Spear from Garatina no problem. I used Play Rough, which did a good chunk of damage, and I followed it with a strong style Play Rough to knock out the Garatina. Origin Garantina comes out and successfully knocks out Sailor with another Aura Sphere. I send out Dimple, and Dimple couldn't really touch Garantina and got knocked out with Shadow Force. I send out Ranga, and Ranga uses Play Rough, which does a good chunk of damage. Garantina unleashes a powerful Earth Power, but luckily we survive it at Yellow, and now we have to finish off Garantina. I unleashed a strong style Play Rough to defeat it once and for all. Now we defeated Garantina, we then get the last play from Volo and got a new flute. After a heated battle, we are left with just two Pokemon, Ranga and Kabramaru. We had a suck to our team since it's in our reserves. Now we have to go catch every Pokemon so we can finish the game. In the Upset of Feelings, we end up encountering a shiny Alpha Graveler and added it to our team since it's the last encounter of the area. We named the Graveler Rock since I'm not feeling creative at this point. We catch the rest of the Pokemon and Legends and, and has successfully caught every Pokemon in the Hisui region. This is our team going into Arceus, and all I can say is Gold Team Rules. For fun, I decided to properly end this lock is to survive Arceus all the way through and battle it at least once. Here's a small recap of the intensity we went through. During our battle with Arceus, it did end up taking Carbomaro from us with the power of a water plate, but left it open to electric attack from Ranga. We successfully defeated Arceus and beat the shiny lock. 
It was a fun thing to do and it took me about 46 in-game hours to defeat the whole game in a shiny lock. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let me know down in the comments below which Pokemon I used was the MVP. Have a fancy day and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.